children so we are starting with trigonometry okay now uh, before we understand the various things in trigonometry first let's understand the concept of angle okay now in geometry when two rays meet at a point okay or two rays start from a point then the angle is formed okay so in geometry the least angle is the least measure of the angle is 0 degree and the largest angle that possible is 360 degree that is 0 degree and 360 degree it is the complete angle okay but in uh, trigonometry okay we have to change the concept of angle formation of angle so in trigonometry what you do we take a fixed point o and revolving line ox okay so suppose this revolves okay rotates either in anti clockwise direction or clockwise direction suppose it revolves in anti clockwise direction and here suppose op ox is the initial position of the rotating line and op is the final position okay the other terminal position of this line so here this okay area traced by this line while revolving in anti clockwise direction is called angle so we can write this as angle dox okay so in trigonometry angle is formed by rotation of a uh, of a revolving line okay either rotate in anti clockwise direction or it may rotate in clockwise direction but when a line rotates in any direction then angle is formed so you see when angle uh, when this line revolves or rotates in anti clockwise direction so we take this as positive okay angle angle is taken as positive when it revolves in anti clockwise direction if it revolves in clockwise direction okay then this angle is taken as negative okay this is got sign of angle so whenever the, uh, the the line revolves in anti clockwise direction the sign of angle will be positive whenever the line revolves in clockwise direction the sign will be negative okay so in trigonometry uh, positive angle <coughs> or negative angle both are possible in geometry you have only positive angle there's no negative angle and one more thing that is different in geometry uh, different uh, trigonometry than geometry is that this line revolving line okay it can rotate once it will make 360 degree it can rotate twice it will make 720 degree and so on so here in trigonometry the measurement of angle or the measure of angle can be more than 360 degree okay or it can be very very large as large as you can make okay and it can be both positive or negative it's po uh, if, if it's revolving in anti-clockwise direction then it is positive this side is positive if revolves in this direction this will be negative okay so you have negative angle possible and positive angles possible and also measure of angle can be more than 360 okay or it can be you know negative or more than 360 okay numerically that is okay so that is the difference between concept of angle in geometry and trigonometry now let's take the units of measurement okay normally we use uh, two methods of uh, measurement that is uh, they are the first one is degree measure and the second one is radian measure now degree measure you are familiar with okay you know in degree measure okay degree measure degree measure you know one right angle is equal to 90 degrees now you are familiar with this one right angle is equal to 90 degree and uh, it's sub multiples one degree equal to you have 60 minutes and one minute equal to 
60 seconds. So these are okay units of angles. You know, one right angle equal to 90 minutes, uh, 90 degrees, one degree equal to 60 minutes, and one day one minute equal to 60 seconds. Okay, these are subunits. Okay, the, you, this uh, measure you are familiar with, so it's not a problem. So other one, radian measure. Okay, number two, the radian measure. Okay, this you have to understand. Now, what is a radian? What is one radian? Normally, uh, uh, see here the definition. A radian is an angle subtended at the center by an arc whose length is equal to the radius. The condition, let's uh, try to understand with the diagram. Suppose this is a circle whose center is O. Now, this is the radius of the circle R. Okay, R is the radius. Now, if we take the arc length here, this is arc, okay, arc length, which is equal to the radius. Okay, remember, this arc length should be equal to the length of radius. So, these two are equal. Then, angle subtended by this arc at the center is called one radian. Okay, so normally we write small c superscript, okay, as a symbol of radian, just like degree, or normally it's not necessary to write. If you don't write degree, just write a number, then we understand it is radian major. Okay, so one radian, understand this, whenever radius of the circle is equal to this arc length, then the angle subtended by this arc, whose length is equal to the radius, is at a angle subtended by this arc at the center is called one radian. Okay, so that is, this is the definition of radian. Now you see a radian is constant angle, meaning whatever the length of radius you take, whether you take bigger circle or you take smaller circle, this angle is always fixed. Even if you take small circle, then if you take this arc equal to this uh, radius, okay, then this angle will also be one radian. So this angle is free of the size of the circle. No matter what size of circle you take, one radian is the same angle, constant angle. So this we can prove uh, by, okay, uh, this diagram, with the help of this uh, diagram. Suppose this is A and this is B. Okay, so here suppose angle AOB is equal to 1 radian, okay, by definition, and uh, arc AB, length of arc AB is equal to arc, okay, equal to R. Now, if you take the, the ratio, okay, you know that the angles at the center the ratio of angles at the center are proportional to the arc lengths. Okay, meaning the ratio of angles at the center means angle AOB by whole angle. Whole angle is 360 degree. Okay, that is 360 degree. You know, angle around the circle is complete angle. That is 360 degree. So ratio of this angle and the whole angle is equal to arc AB by whole arc that is circumference. Circumference, the formula is 2 pi r. Okay, so arc AB by, so ratio of the angles is equal to the ratio of the arcs in any circle. Okay, so angle AOB, you know, is one radian, one radian. Okay, so this 360 goes this side and here AB equal to, what is the value of AB? It is r. So this is 360 r by 2 pi r. So r gets cancelled. Okay. So 1 radian equal to 360 by 2 pi. Now you see 360 is a constant, 2 is also constant and pi is also, you know, it is a constant. Since RHS is everything is constant, so 1 radian is constant angle. You see. 1 radian equal to 360 is a constant, value is fixed, 2 is also constant, you know, pi is also constant, pi is the ratio of 
uh, it is circumference to diameter okay so pi is also constant so since r this whole thing is a constant so one radian is constant that means no matter what radius you take okay so this angle is one radian angle is always same okay so it is a constant angle so next now okay you have understood about what is a radian so now we see here okay uh, what is the relation between degree and radian now you just got here okay you got just now one radian equal to 360 360 degree by 2 pi okay so that means this means 2 pi equal to 360 degree this implies pi radian equal to 180 degree remember so pi radian equal to 180 degree this is the relation between radian major and 180 uh, and degree major so remember pi means pi radian is equal to 180 degree so that means one radian equal to then it will be 180 by pi 180 degree by pi okay similarly uh, one degree is equal to then pi by 180 okay radian so one degree equal to pi by 180 radian so this way you can convert from radian to degree or from degree to radian okay that we'll see later on when we do conversion okay now next notational convention okay notational convention now you know zero degree equal to you know zero radian only okay this is a degree and this is radian major right zero degree is equal to zero <coughs> now you know 180 degree equal to pi radian okay as we have found earlier 180 degree equal to pi radian so here 90 degree equal to then pi by 2 radian okay so 45 degree equal to pi by 4 radian okay 30 degree equal to pi by 6 because 180 by 6 is 30 degree and 60 degree equal to pi by 3 okay 360 degree equal to 2 pi etc so we can express this okay angles in terms of pi in radian major okay so here is not necessary to write radian it is understood okay these are kind of notational convention okay now let's try to find the length of the arc okay how to find the length of arc of a circle so length of an arc okay length of an arc now suppose we take a circle okay this is the center o this o a now suppose this radius so we take this equal to r so this angle becomes one radian okay now we take another arc here and the length of this arc is suppose s s is the length of the arc small letter s and the angle subtended by this arc here is theta okay now you see here suppose this is b and this is p okay now here what we have is angle aob is equal to one radian by definition because this arc length is equal to radius r okay then angle aop aop is equal to theta radian as we have taken here theta okay so arc ab length of arc ab is equal to r and the length of arc ap is equal to s okay suppose we have this one now you know that the angles at the center are proportional to their subtending arcs so we have angle aop by angle 
AOB is equal to this is the ratio of angles at the center AOP by AOB. So similarly, angle AOP is made by arc AP. So this is arc AP by arc AB because angle AOB is made by AB and angle AOP is subtracted by AP. So now this will give you angle AOP. Angle AOP is equal to theta. We have theta radian, and angle AOB is one radian. Okay, this equal to arc AP is S and arc AB equal to R. So this gives you theta equal to S by R implies S equal to R theta. So this is the formula for arc length. Remember, this is very important. Okay, this formula you require even in class twelve next year. So S equal to R theta. Okay, so this is the formula for arc length. S is the length of the arc. The formula is R theta. Remember, here theta must be in radian measure. Okay, so if it is in degree, then you have to convert that into radian measure. Then you can use this formula. Okay, S equal to R theta. All right. Now next we'll see how to find the area of sector. Okay, area of sector. So next we find area of sector. Now uh, of a circle, of course. Area of sector. Now to remember what is a sector. Here, suppose this is a center. Okay, so area bounded by, okay, area bounded by two radii and arc, an arc here, okay, OAB. So this area is called, it is called a sector. Now don't get confused with segment. Segment is in a circle is, is area bounded by. The uh, chord and and this arc here. So this is called segment. This is called uh, minor segment. This is called major segment. Okay. So that is segment here. Sector. Okay. Suppose this angle is theta. So AOB, the region, which is shaded region here, AOB is called the sector. Now, how to find the area of sector? Okay, so here, once again, you know, angles at the center, okay, is equal to the ratio of angles at the center is also is equal to the ratio of the areas. Okay, so here, angle AOB. Suppose this is theta. Okay, radius is r. So now, therefore, area of sector sector AOB by area of circle is equal to the the angle at the center central angle at the sector is theta by sector AOB. By area of circle, here angle is theta, and whole angle is how much? It is 360 degree. That is 2 pi. Area of sector AOB by area of circle is equal to angle theta by whole angle is 2 pi. Okay. So now we get area of sector AOB is equal to uh, this is uh, area of circle. By pi r square is equal to theta by two pi. Okay, area of sector O B by area of circle is pi r square is equal to theta by two pi. This gives you area of sector A O B is equal to theta by pi r square into pi r square. Theta by 2 pi into pi r square. So here pi will get cancelled. 
okay so what you get is here half r square theta so this is the formula for area sector so therefore area of sector is equal to half r square theta half r square theta okay this is the formula for area of sector now in the previous formula we got a is equal to r theta so this can be expressed as half into okay r into r theta because r square is there r square means r into r theta and we know r, r theta equal to s so you can write this as half r s so this is area of sector in terms of this in terms of radius and arc length this in terms of radius and angle at the center okay so two formulas remember area of sector is equal to half r square theta okay this is half r square theta or half r s okay so it depends if you know r and theta use this formula if you know r and s arc length use this formula okay so now uh, let's take uh, some questions to understand the applications these formulas now we have uh, some questions here let's take question number one it says given angle is 240 degree okay this is in degree measure and you have to convert this into radian measure all right so degree measure to radian measure so how you can do this okay so now we know okay we know 180 degree equal to pi radian okay we have already found 180 degree equal to pi radian so this gives you 1 degree equal to pi by 180 radian so therefore 240 degree equal to pi by 180 into 240 radian okay so you can simplify this one you see here 180 equal to pi radian that we have uh, found earlier so 1 degree equal to so 180 will divide unitary method and 240 so 240 will multiply here okay so 0 0 cancel 6 will cancel 6 3 is 18 6 4 is so 24 so it is 4 pi by 3 radian so this is answer so 240 degree is equal to 4 pi by 3 radian so this way <coughs> you can convert any degree measure into radian measure now let's see the other way how to convert radian measure into degree measure okay so question number two we are given 5 pi by 3 okay this is radian now we have to convert into degree so you know pi radian equal to 180 degree using the same relation so therefore one radian equal to 180 degree by pi okay so therefore 5 pi by 3 radian equal to 180 degree by pi into 5 pi by 3 okay so here pi will get cancelled being constant 3 will cancel here 60 degree okay so 5 6 are 300 degree. so 5 pi by 3 is equal to 300 degree okay so this way you can convert into degree now you know how to convert from degree to radian and how to convert from radian to degree okay now let's take uh, the last question for the day okay question number three now if you can read it here a wheel makes 360 degree revolutions in one minute it makes 360 revolutions in one minute through how many through how many radians does it turn in one second okay you have to find the angle in that means in one second what uh, angle in radian it makes okay so here in one minute it makes 360 revolutions so you have to find in one second so you write in one minute 
number of revolutions is equal to 360. Okay, so 1 minute means 60 seconds. That means in 60 seconds, number of revolutions is equal to 360. Okay, because 1 minute equals 60 seconds. So this implies in 1 second, number of revolutions will be 360 by 60 because in 60 seconds it makes 360 means in one second it will make 60 times less so that is 6 will go here that means 6 revolutions okay in one second the number of revolutions is 6 okay now we have to convert this into angle okay you know one revolution one revolution means 360 degrees remember okay so you write one revolution equal to it is 2 pi radians because 360 degree means 2 pi okay one revolution means 2 pi pi means 180 degree so 2 pi means 360 degree so therefore 6 revolutions is equal to how much 6 into 2 pi that is how much 12 pi radians okay radians not needs to write so in 6 revolutions it makes 12 pi so so how many radians does it turn in one second? Means in one second it turns 12 pi radians. Okay. So thank you class. We'll continue in the next class.